Hi everyone, my name is Hussein Salman and welcome to this hands-on series of modernizing application with Azure and Kubernetes. This is the second session where we will contrive the application with Docker. Let's take a look at the outline. We'll explain how we contrive our application by using Docker files and then we'll explain multi-stage builds when finally we will run the application using Docker commands. For the resources, you can find the code in the following GitHub repo. For the prerequisites, you need Git, Visual Studio Code, and Docker. In my case, I have Docker Desktop installed since I have Windows 10 Professional Edition. So the first step to containerize the application starts with a Docker file. A Docker file contains a bunch of instructions which informs Docker how the Docker image should get built. Docker then will produce that shippable image which contains everything our application needs. It contains the code, dependencies, any runtime, and configuration. Finally, we get our application by spinning a container instance of that Docker image. A quick overview on the application again, we have three components, the front end, the product service, or RESTful service, and then we have the Mongo database. Now let's take a look at the code. So as you see here, I have uh, three different folders, the back-end application, which contains my RESTful service, the front-end application, which contains my Angular code, and database. In my database, I have a Docker file. The Docker file, actually, as you see here, is just a list of instructions that creates our image. The first instruction in a Docker file is from. This specifies the base image that we are running on top of. Here, it's clear I am saying I need a Mongo image with this tag. Then I'm using a copy instruction, which copies my uh, some of my local files here in the um, in the database folder. I have import script and product JSON. I'm copying both of them into my container. Finally, the exposed instruction tells the container what port it will use. As you see here, import is a script that populates my uh, collection or Mongo database with some data from product JSON. I could have executed that import script here or another way to populate my database is spin up another container and then once this container is up, I, I will populate that container. But I will show you some, I will show some how to execute uh, some commands on a running container. So uh, I will do that later on. Now, moving to my backend application, I also need to create an image. So here I have a Docker file. And in this Docker file, as you see, it's big because I'm using multi-stage builds. The main goal here is to minimize the size of our images to increase efficiency. As the name indicates, I have multiple stages. So I'm starting with the first stage here. I named it build and I'm starting with an image tagged SDK, which is a large image that contains my full .NET Core SDK. So we can build the API. I'm specifying the work directory inside the container by source and then copying the CS project from my local file system to the CS as, as a, to the source fold inside the container and then running .NET restore to install all the packages. In the next step, I'm copying uh, the rest of the code to the source folder inside the container and running .NET build to build my application. Here, in the second stage, I'm, .NET, I'm using .NET Publish to publish the artifact of my application. The third step here, the third stage, we're using .NET Image tagged with AS.NET Core Runtime, which is an optimized smaller version. We're, and the, here, then we're copying the artifact from second stage and running the container by using the .NET command here. As you see here in the third step, I am passing some parameters in, in my case, it's connection string to connect to the database because this might change depending on the environment. You would probably need to do the same and always decouple the information or configuration data and avoid, and avoid hard coding it. I need just to highlight one important thing here. So if you see in the following step, number four and then eight, here I'm copying back in the project and the source code. So why I'm not copying the CS project and the source code and running .NET build just once? 
So when building an OR images from a Docker file, each line of this line generates its own layer, and these layers are cached and only rebuilt if changes are detected. And so the .NET Restore step here, which restores the NACAD packages, is make, making its own layer. These packages don't change too often, so it's always reusing the cache layer unless the packages change. However, code in this step is more likely to change every time we're building our images. So we're doing this actually to reduce the time uh, the, build, the build might take and to level some of the cache existing, existing cache layers. Here also in the front-end application, you see another Docker file. This Docker file contains some instruction to, to use node image as a base image, copy the rest of the code, and then building the code. Also here I'm using Nginx as a reverse proxy. This is the configuration file if you're interested to, to check it. So here I'm telling Nginx, hey, if you ever, ever encounter this API product URL, Please forward it to this container or service. Now, in order to run our application, we need to use some Docker commands to build our images and run the application. So, I have the Docker directory here. I created two batch files. Each one of those steps will build the images. So, if you if you would check this here, I'm building. Uh, my uh, application images, I need one for the backend, one for the UI, and one for the MongoDB. So what I'm doing here, I'm using the docker build, I'm using the t-argument to specify the name of the image, and then I'm specifying the directory where the daemon can look so it can find the docker file. So in my case, backend, which represents this backend directory, the docker daemon will look into it and find the docker file here. So I have here, I will have eventually three images back in UI Mongo database. Let's now execute that script in order to build our images. So now I'm building the images. It will go through each one of the instruction. So now we're building the layer, layer after layer. And it happens quickly because I've already rebuilt that before. So it reduces some of the existing cache layers. It finished building the back end image. And then now, now it's starting with the front end. It finishes it. Now it's building the Mongo database image. We're done. Let's see what images I have now. So I have the backend image UI among database, which were created like nine seconds later. Now going to the second stage, which is running the containers. First, I need to create a network to allow containers to communicate internally I'm calling this network product store. After that, I need to run my containers. So here I'm running as the first container, which is my Mongo database. I'm using run, run, run command, running it in detached mode, specifying the name of that container, which is called database, specifying the network it will use with the product store, which is already created from the first step here. And then I'm specifying the ports. In my case here is 27.0.17 for the uh, host and 27.0.17 also for the container. I'm using here MongoDB image, which I've already created here. So now in the next step, I'm running also another container for the backend called it backend API. I'm specifying two ports, mapping the host ports 5001 with the container port 80, and I'm also passing some of the connection string parameters. Also, I'm creating another one for the AI, listening on port 8080 on the host machine and port 80 on the container. Let's now run the, our containers.
here I'm, the network is being created and all the docker containers are running let's check our containers great I have three containers the UI the backend API and the base and they have been created seven seconds ago now let's try to run the application I need to run it on 5001 if I need to browse the backend API and the UI is port 8080 So this is a simple application I was talking about. This is a products and just one simple click I should get, get my products. I'm not able to get my product if you remember because I believe there was no data. Let's check our API. It's 5001. Okay, I assume there is no data. We can use Postman to test that, but for the simplicity, I will. So there is no data here. Now let's let's run some commands on Mongo or database container so we can populate the data. So what I will doing here, I will execute a batch shell inside the container using Docker running it in uh, IT iterative mode and then sorry interactive mode and then using bash oh I need to specify the uh, container okay now I'm inside the container I can list the files so here I have import sh, import script, and product json, which I've already copied from the using the Docker file instruction, the Docker files. Now let's see what in the script. This is the command. I will execute it right away. So if you see here, like I have now three documents imported to my database. Let's check that. I'm now inside Mongo. Let's show the databases. I have product store, which was already created here. Now let's see, let's use the product store. And see the collections. Show collections. And db.products. Find to list the documents. So I have two documents. Awesome. Let's go back to the application. Get products now. I have my documents listed. So in this session, we have went through like Docker files, multi-stage builds, and then like uh, show you guys how you can run the quick uh, application using Docker. Now. In the next session, we will show you how you run the application using Docker Compose.